what's up everybody it's easy easy street gaming coming to you from clash royale today doing another clash royale video got another deck for you second deck that i've shown everyone first one was the hog the hog rider deck this one right here i guess we can call it the the golem beatdown deck because what i what, what i'm doing is i'm getting the golem into play as soon as possible i'm not waiting until that one minute mark like a lot of people do so I get the Golem in pretty much as soon as possible, and then I just apply pressure, and I never let off the gas pedal. Uh, this is this deck does have a, um, some really big, big, big high points. It also has a couple setbacks that we'll go into, so you have to kind of be careful with it because if you get into this uh, trading battle and, and you're trading cards back and forth, you're going to end up uh, falling behind on Elixir, and you'll you won't be able to get your big cards out there. So you're going to have to kind of be patient at first. And get get that you know, I, I know I'm no pro by any means, and I've seen, and when I watch the pros play, uh, if you ever want to see any of the pros play, go to go to Clash with Ash. He I think he's got not saying bad about anyone else, but he has just got awesome content for Clash Royale. I learn a lot every single time I, I go onto his channel, uh, and I and I notice a lot of the guys uh, that he has on there, they'll wait on the golem, they'll wait, 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 they put it into that one minute mark, and then they kind of overwhelm you with this big rush right at the one minute mark. Because I'm not as good as them, <clears throat> I'll start off a lot earlier than that. <laughs> now, of course, I'm not doing that right now, but that's not by design. Uh, that's just kind of, I'm just kind of holding them off. I've already got one castle. So normally what I'll do is, once I take the first castle, I, I'm not going to just I'm not gonna just go on to defense. I'm going to make sure I play defense, but I'm actually looking for a good opportunity to take out that other tower. You don't want to just sit back, because um, that's how I, if I sit back on my heels... That's usually when they end up getting the tower back, getting even, and then they have momentum, and you don't. This game has a ton to do with momentum. So you want the momentum to go in your favor and stay there. So there, there you go. He's got a very similar tactic that I was using with the hog deck. He used, used the hog. He fireballs it. He throws the log in with it. So he's got all these tactics that I was using with the hog rider deck. But what I'm doing is I've got Gollum. And look how long he's got a mega um, a mega knight too. Look how long the mega knight takes to try to take Gollum out. It has been on it forever. I think it was actually a month. Uh, <laughs> and then so so now I got I got the mega knight in. He puts one on top of me, and now I've got all these cards to put on top of the mega knight to try to help him get through. Um, the bats are a great defensive piece, and then I have then uh, one of my favorite cards. I have the infernal dragon, and um, and I'll tell you. I like to use the Infernal Dragon in two ways. Uh, well, obviously you have offense and defense, but that's not really what I mean. Um, I like to put him in behind a tank, so you'll have the Golem. Um, you put him down, and I've kind of, ideally, if I've built up the Elixir right, I've got the Golem in, and it's advancing, and then I'm waiting to see what he does, and then I'm waiting to see if I would need to put the Mega Knight in and drop him down on top of someone and kind of start the second part of the push off of a big Mega Knight defensive uh, drop. Uh, if not, then I'll put the Infernal Dragon behind the Golem, let the Golem tank for the Infernal Dragon. You will get a lot of towers that way. Uh, unless they unless they drop troops behind the Infernal Dragon and take it out from behind, uh, it's, it's going to take out... I mean, that is a hard thing to stop because the Infernal Dragon, I think it takes 7 or 8 seconds before it kicks into high gear. I, and I could be way off on that, but it takes it takes a little time to kick in a high gear. The uh, the the Zap uh, Electro Wizard is the Infernal Dragon's nemesis. Um, every single time it zaps him, the Infernal the uh, Electro Wizard zaps the Infernal Dragon. It resets, so he never really starts to build up. Uh, anyway, so that's the first way I use it. And just like right here, I've got him going in behind the Golem. Golem can take a ton of damage. Ton and ton, you know, that may be arguably the best card. Um, in you know, I think it may be the best card in the game. I know some people may disagree with me on that, but I really think it may be the best card in the game. And there's my phone. Typical. Okay, where was I? Oh yeah, okay. Second, second use for the Infernal Dragon is if I have a push going on the left lane. I will put him solo down in the right lane. What that does is that forces them, forces them to do something about the Infernal Dragon. And then you can play off that. You can see exactly what they put in on the Infernal Dragon. If they commit to a big card on it, then you may be able to commit to the small card like the bats. And then now you have the Infernal Dragon and the bats taking out maybe a big card. 
and you know try to gain an advantage that way this game is all about gaining small advantages gaining elixir advantages like right there they had two witches in uh, and one fireball took out two witches so that's that's a good trade-off for me I think the witches what are they five cards so that's a ten for a four anytime you can do that I mean that's a win now he puts the uh, he puts the prince in gonna drop the mega knight in on him uh, you know the mega knight has tons of advantages uh, one of them is the elite barbarians uh, if they put in those barbarians and, and and he'll drop on top of them and he will take them down in two strokes and um, Hit them both at one time. So he'll drop on top of them. I think that's like five seven hundred damage or something like that When he drops down on them and then two more two more hits and they go down So that stops that big push now what you have to be careful of with the mega knight is the knight I'll say it again what you have to be careful of, of the, with the mega knight is the knight the knight is definitely one of his net one of the hardest cards for the mega knight to take to deal with and the reason and there's a lot of cards that you can counter with uh, the mega knight with that's why he's not nearly as possible uh, as as uh, popular as he was when he first came out everyone was using him i don't see him that often anymore but every time i do see him it is a pain i mean the decks that have mega knight in it are still really good decks they're hard they're hard to deal with um but the knight is such a good counter that I think a lot of people are kind of backing off and the, the problem is the knight hits twice as fast and so he gets two hits in for every one that the mega knight gets in and and they, they basically trade out the knight for the mega knight because I think the knight and the mega knight if they go head to head I think they pretty much eliminate each other so that's just too big of a you, you know you put in a three card on a seven card and it's an even swap that's that's no good so you have to be mindful of that and oh look at this he drops in the um, drops in the goblin barrel and now now I know he's got the clone and th let's talk about clone for a second when you know that your opponent has clone you have to change the way you play um, so now I have a couple of defensive things that I can do with clone I have the um, uh, if he's gonna clone the goblin barrel I can hold on to the log and just wait for it wait to see what happens and I just wasted the log right there because my, my that tower is probably going to um, hit mo no handle most of those he's over there talking trash because he knows that I didn't have to do that but now here comes the here comes the beat down part I'm gonna put I I'm, I'm don't really remember what I did I'm gonna put a big card in and I'm gonna start another push he hasn't taken that 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 left side out yet so I'm gonna start off on the left side and now he puts a lava hound in great counter for the lava hound is the infernal dragon the only thing you don't want oh so he's gonna try the laloon so the only thing you don't want is you don't want to put the infernal dragon in too soon and get pulled into his side so now here he goes he's gonna probably try to clone these uh, so he's got a big push going on so he's and most likely I'm gonna probably lose a tower I forget yeah I lose a the tower there but I have Gollum on his tower right now and here comes uh, here comes all kinds of power coming his way so immediately back in trouble and th this is one of the big advantages for having Gollum in your deck if you can if you can keep Gollum in your deck it takes them so long to take him out now he's got a Mega Knight on him he's got the Infernal Dragon coming this is game over that's it game over easy wins noob rookie call call me all of them that's what I am I'm about a 50 50 player if I play um, I've managed to stay up in um, in the hog mountain or whatever that's called uh, which is great because I get that legendary card in my in my uh, in the shop and that has really changed a lot of stuff for me because I will I'll get in these tournaments and play in them and play them and play in them and build up and I always try to keep more than 40,000 coins and then I'll and then I'll be I'll be buying these legendary cards like crazy in the shop as soon as I get about 70,000 and it may seem like a lot I don't know how much um, really good players are shuffling through their their uh, their account uh, the guys in my clan I have a lot of good players in my clan but they're not um, they're not really uh, out there playing as much as I do I guess because they're not they're not getting up these big numbers so another good way to start off these pushes r remember to stay off the bridge I, I I've, I've done it I mean I if I as soon as I get in trouble I'm dumping things on the bridge I think everyone does it but the, if you can avoid dumping troops right on the bridge and look I, you know that you still can't drop troops in if you don't have enough elixir I've tried so many times and it hasn't worked yet <laughs> Mega Knight takes out the hog takes out the wizard 
Hog Wizard is a tough combination for anyone. The Wizard is just, uh, you know, the classic troop. It's so powerful. Does such a good job. He's got, got the Bomber. Uh, Bomber's another one of these really powerful two troops. Or, is he, I don't know if he's a two or three. But um, I don't usually use him. But I hate it when other people use him against me. Especially if they're good players and they know how to use him. Another popular card coming out is uh, the mi this minion, Mega Minion or whatever. Doesn't have a lot of hit points, but he's kind of like one of those chip, one of those chip cards. He'll come down. He'll maybe get one shot or two shots, but just like the Hog, I mean the Hog, you can. He's designing these attacks to where he's doing like the double and triple strikes with the Hogs. So he's putting the Hog Rider in. He's either following up the Hog Rider with the log or the fireball. If you if you follow up the hog with a fireball, you're pretty much guaranteeing about 700 damage. Unless unless the player that you're playing against has such a good defense that they tornado you off of it, or they get you on the way in with a bunch of cards. Especially if you're using following up a log, because they can put in a um, a swarm troop or they can put in a, a hoarding troop, and the log just blows right through them. But so that's about a 700. So you have to be mindful of that when you're playing against someone that's that's got a, a hog cycle deck. Um, you really you really want to hold on to some of these cards to to counter the hog with. And I know I'm probably just stating the obvious, but I really just don't do enough of these videos to know exactly uh, what everyone else out there knows. Uh, we have a wide range of knowledge in, in our clan. We have guys that have been with us for a long time that are still learning, you know, after a year or something. Um, and I think it's the difference between the guys that spend gems and the ones that don't. The guys that don't spend gems still don't have legendary cards. They've been playing for about a year. And the guys that will go out and buy some of these, uh, you know, when the, especially when the events come through. Uh, and, you can, and you can buy um, a legendary uh, chest for minimal. And, and, you know, I'll go do that in a second. <laughs> and that's why I have every card. So, it, you know, it's, I'm, a, I'm an advocate for spending money on what you play. Um, if I was out in public going out to uh, go play uh, pool for some, for a good example, being a former pool player, uh, you know, I would always go and, you know, you, you're, you pay money to go play. So I've paid some money to play, uh, support the game. Uh, but I don't have anything against people that don't. I just have a, I just have a problem with people that complain about uh, having this, having to buy gems. I don't know. I won't get into that today. <laughs> All right, so back to back to the deck. Now it's it's tied up one apiece, and you see he doesn't have much damage on me, and I'm basically two fireballs away. And so what I'm going to do is probably not throw a fireball down there. All that I really need to do is fireball his main castle twice, and I've got it. Um, but I do have a mega knight down there. I think I'm one jump away. There goes the jump. Down goes the main castle. Another big advantage for having Mega Knight in your in your deck is that if it does some work and he survives, I know people counter it real well, but if he survives and he gets that first jump, it's just he just gets such a big impact for that first jump. Okay, I believe this is the last last uh, replay in the video, and this is what I was talking about. I started off right away with Gollum. And he puts a witch in, so I'm going to damage the witch by putting a fireball down. And then I'll be able to log the witch, and she goes down. And now, I, I see, I, I like doing that because now I've already got a little damage on the tower. In, in, in his head, I did it for more reasons just to damage the tower because the damage on the tower is so minimal. But in his head, he knows if he puts a troop in behind, uh, in back, I'm, I might fireball it. And, uh, you know, uh, people that play the princess behind that tower, um, I know I've done it. I don't know what it is. I think it's guys with China that do it all the time. You put the princess in and they fireball her every time. So I've gotten in the habit of um, if I have a fireball right there in the beginning, I might fireball that first troop coming in just to get it in their head that, hey, I'm going to fireball you if you put anything in behind, from behind. And that might, that might um, force them or just get them out of rhythm a little bit and make them drop a little further up. And then they won't have the same timing that they're used to. And um, one of the things you're always trying to do is you're trying to throw off their timing. And there he goes. There I go again. There he goes. Like, like he's not me. There he goes. <laughs> Wizard goes in. Fireballed him. Is that a word? I don't know. And oh, okay. So now he's going. Now this is actually a really good tactic. And you see, <laughs> you see me going crazy with the mouse. You know, I play on blue stacks. 
So um, I'm not tapping a, a tablet. I'm actually playing with a mouse and it's not an advantage for anyone who wants to know it's not an advantage on top of that blue stacks is a huge program so i get this uh, and i have i'm dealing with a lag constantly and plus uh i'm old so i have kids and every person in my family they all watch everything on their phones so i'm constantly got all this uh information going across the router so I'm gonna say right now that if you play me and beat me, it's probably not my fault. It's probably my kid's fault for watching movies while I'm trying to play. They just don't respect me. <laughs> so, got two towers and got Gollum going towards the, the last tower, and they're still trying off. They're still trying to pull off offense, which you know you can't blame them. They they're not going to win if they don't get at least one tower. But look how effective Bats and in, um, in the Dark Goblin is against against the balloon. Wow. That was just, he didn't even come close to me. And, uh, oh, look at this. Everything's folding in. That means time is up. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I enjoy making it. I'm going to try to make more of these videos. Um, I really enjoy playing Clash Royale. When I don't want to kill the people I'm playing against, I just have a lot of fun doing it. Um, I haven't rage quit and, and actually uh, damaged anything yet. So, good to go there. So... Sub to the channel, guys. It's mostly Clash of Clans, so if you're a Clash player, c come see me. It's Easy Street Gaming. Uh, got a website. The website is probably the biggest Clash of Clans website out there. It's called Clash Made Easy. www.clashmadeeasy.com. Come check it out. Till next time. Take care, everybody.